Hey, welcome back to another episode here on the Mr. Build channel. Behind me is the laundry room, and today we're gonna remodel it. But first, we wanna thank the sponsors of today's video, Flexiel. Now let's go take a look inside. On, on today's episode, we're gonna be transforming this laundry room. It's fine, it's functional, there's plenty of room, but we're gonna make it better. Besides, I don't like it. So we're gonna take this basic laundry room and and turn it to that. Plumbed in for a sink, got a drying rack, tons of storage, huge countertop, built-in cabinets for the hamper and ironing boards and all that stuff. Let me show you how I did it and exactly how much it cost. So the vision that I have for this is I want to kind of center this here. It's kind of an awkward space. I hate that you can use this for folding, but it's really awkward. So I want a big wrap around countertop. Let's do our favorite part of a project, demo day. Gonna be nothing but socks behind the washer and dryer. Okay, now that the demo is done in the laundry room, we're gonna start building the base cabinets. So I got three different types of cabinets. I went with a sanded pine instead of the maple or birch finish. Saves me about 20 bucks a sheet. So, so far we're looking pretty dang good. I measured my cabinets, they're gonna be unorthodox. They're gonna be 40 inches tall, which is crazy, but I wanted to come over the washer dryer. Next up for the sides is to cut out the toe kick, three and a half inches deep, four inches long. The tape is there to make sure when we use our jigsaw that it doesn't start tearing out all of our plywood. We need to create a quarter inch channel on both sides in order for the quarter inch plywood to slide down as a backer piece. I'm gonna create two passes, eighth inch plus another eighth inch creates quarter inch. That'll be a perfect size or you can throw a dado stack, but this is a quick way. Let's assemble some cabinets, folks. Everything's cut, I'm gonna position it there. Use our inch and a quarter pocket screws right over there and some wood glue just to bring it all together. Finishing touch for the cabinet, the quarter inch plywood. So let's slide that into this little channel we created. Beautiful, look at that. Perfect gaps and a beautiful interior. All three cabinet carcasses for the lower cabinets are done. Before we do the face frame, let's do the top two cabinets I'm gonna have because in the middle of them, I'm gonna have floating shelves. So the two ones are gonna be huge. I'll have them in two corners. Let's bust those out real quick. start cutting them up and putting pocket holes to create a frame. And then I'm gonna put pocket holes on the outside here to attach it. Our first face frame is officially complete. Make sure corner to corner is the same number. You're gonna let it dry, sand it. To attach them, I'm gonna put pocket holes on the outside. There's gonna be filler pieces between the walls and you won't see the side. So we'll clamp this sucker on, drill the pocket hole through, and then attach this face frame. Let's go do a dry mock-up to make sure that we're on plan how we should be going. So I did a terrible job calculating this. I did not consider this space here. I forgot that because it's 24 inches, these cabinets need to be 24 inches, not 27 and a half. So I gotta figure out how to shorten this. I think I could run it on my table saw and then re-secure re it, but golly, it's frustrating. Christ is averted. Shaved about five inches off this thing. <laughs> Not bad. Perfect. Now we gotta do this one. At this point, I feel comfortable securing these cabinets and then the upper cabinets as well. We will be assembling our doors using a three-piece router kit, style, rail, and the panel bit. Make sure you know which way is up. Typically, the top part of the bit, like right here, is gonna be the back side. You don't want to, when you rotate, flip them this way because you're gonna have one front, one back. And look at that, folks, a beautiful, 
perfect door. Could not be happier with it. The doors are all dried and finished up. They look great. Uh, I'm gonna take them out of the clamps, sand off any wood glue that's there, round over the edges, and then we'll start installing the hardware to fit them on. And this is just a, an alignment on the side, and this is a Forstner bit that creates a hole that you cut flush to the top, and this will sit perfectly inside of it. We're also gonna pre-drill these holes here because I don't want this to crack because it's a little more dense. All right, let's go install these doors. Uh, we'll need a pilot drill, just a drill bit that we can create a pilot hole so it doesn't split the face frame. All right, guys, we're getting ready to install the tile. I'm sure to scrape up all the linoleum adhesive so it looks perfect. This is a polished porcelain tile. I got it from Lowe's. I'll link in the description. It's not expensive at all. I think the whole thing cost me maybe like 150 bucks. Now, the leveling system I'm using is this uh, Marshalltown fast cap system. It has these little spacers. These are one uh, 16th of an inch. Put them together, then you roll the cap on these threads and I'll level the, the tile to make sure that it's completely flush with the next tile next to it. Now, because we're using large format tile, we have to get a large format tile tile mortar for the floor. We're gonna apply it on the ground and then use these half inch trowels to create these layers. And on the back side of the tile, we're gonna do what's called a back buttering. And that makes sure that everything gets sticky on both sides so there's no air bubbles and it, it's gonna be picture perfect. All right, guys, it's been one full day. The tile is all cured. Man, I'm a huge fan of this Marshall Town fast cap system. Like I said, I got it at Lowe's. Super easy to use, very happy. Probably the best tile job I've ever done. I will go on record to say that. Now, to pop these off, this is really cool. You gotta just kick them in the direction where this line is set up. So if this flap is sideways, you gotta kick it this way, not that way. So here's an example. Look at that, how easy. It's officially grout time. So we're using this sanded mix. You can do it as small as one eighth to as high as five eighths of a joint. And then once mixed up, you're using a grout squeegee to push it all in place. Okay, it's like 28 degrees outside. My hands are freezing. I think this is ready to go. Let's do it. All right, we'll let it sit for about 15, 30 minutes, and then we'll start taking a sponge and cleaning everything up. So now I have a video where I show you three different ways to make floating shelves, and you could probably check it out, I don't know, somewhere right here. But in this situation, we're gonna build floating shelves that are between two cabinets, which is a lot easier to do. Uh, I'm gonna need the top, bottom, and the front face. Both are gonna be mitered, but the back is just gonna be the way it is. I'm gonna start cutting this up and we'll see how we're gonna attach them. I heard somebody tell me that if you want a nice tight miter, you wanna get it at like 45 and a half. Now we have to start cutting up the pieces that are gonna be the supporting brackets. And well, one piece is gonna be here, this is 10, and a half, and then one piece is gonna go down here across that's gonna be 55 inches the way this is. I'm gonna secure those into this U and against the cabinets, you know, brad nails, screws, whatever have you, and then we're gonna sandwich this and wood glue this on, brad nail in place, and then fill everything else with wood filler, sand it, paint it, and nobody will know the difference. Um, I don't know why the bad seams came out not as great. They're not terrible, but they're not the best. In the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go cut this piece and try to attach it, pocket holes on the sides, and then maybe a bracket on the side there. How cool does that look? It looks so nice, so clean. Good morning, guys. Uh, we are refreshed and ready to tackle the plumbing and electrical situation that I know is gonna be a headache. I've already started cutting some drywall out, but I need to do some more. So we're gonna need to add a water supply and an adequate draining for the sink that'll be here in the 24 inch cabinet. What I figure we're gonna do is we're just gonna chop this off, chop that off, throw this piece away, and then we're gonna add a three-way sanitary uh, drain that way we'll have this part basically mirrored here. We'll keep our vent, and then for this one, we'll add the drainage for the new sink. I realize this is gonna be the hardest time try to create these cuts with such narrow room to be able to fit these pipes. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop this down here, remove that, fit all the plumbing perfectly, and then I'll just build a little nice box frame around it so I can secure drywall. I'm gonna do this little extension piece, um, just because there's a gap here, add the cement on, Push it in. Things when there are vent tubes like this, there's flex because it's going up into the attic. So this is gonna be here. As you can see, this is our drain for the washer. It needs a P-trap. So we'll have it here. That was the original one. Put a little extender piece and that should be good. Now that we have the drain for the washer, we'll do the drain for the sink. Uh, this is a 90 degree long span elbow just to get an e easier flow. Um, the moral of the story with plumbing is to cut down all the turbulence for drainage. 
All right, up next, we're gonna start doing the water supply line for the faucet. Um, you get a little holder like this for the, the water supplies. These are copper uh, J lines. They go in here, secured in place with these little caps. They tighten it in place. Usually I've always used the hand clamping, uh, but I got this. We'll see how it looks. And we're gonna use these uh, T's. They're gonna go in place like this with the PEX rings and the PEX crimped into place, and then we'll be able to connect them over there. because there was not enough room to tap into this line, um, I had to do a little detour around. Works perfectly fine, totally okay. We'll take this outlet off, piggyback the cable down over, close this off when we're done. So the plumbing is all done. We're just gonna start working on the countertop today so we can get to the point where we can connect the plumbing that's there. It's gonna go in an L shaped across here. There's gonna be plenty of support for it except for one place obviously in the back here. I'm gonna use the scrap piece of wood, the one by two that I had, and I'm gonna create a perfect line and secure through the studs in place. So therefore this will be the only span that'll overhang and I think will be just fine. At this point, we're gonna brad nail it on top. Make sure it doesn't move anywhere. Cut out this little piece, and then we'll stack another slide over. We're gonna lay two pieces, one full piece here, one full piece there, and we're gonna use the flex glue uh, a layer on top here. What that's gonna do is glue everything together. This stuff is super thick. It's a heavy duty construction adhesive, and the best part about using it right now, as opposed to let's say wood glue or anything, is that I don't have to wait for wood glue to dry for it to prevent from moving. This has instant grab. So we're gonna start putting a bunch of it down, put the thing on top, brad nail it, just in place, and then we'll start working on the edge. This is exactly what we're looking for, the same level. So this is the front edge. We're gonna attach it to the side uh, side grain of the particle board. Now, I can't just wood, use wood glue on this because the wood glue will seep all the way through those little particle board pieces. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the uh, flex glue again because it's so thick and it has instant grab. So what I have here is two rolls of Formica, which is like a laminate that you can uh, glue on. They don't have it in store, so it's something that has to be ordered. Um, took about five days to show up. It's like this uh, fake marble look. But in the meantime, I'm gonna start cutting this on my table saw, the two dimensions that I will need to make this work, so for a dry fit. Folks, there's no safe way to use my table saw for this because how long this piece is. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down on a solid platform and use my track saw. Um, and then if you guys don't have a track saw, just use a circular saw with a guide. Okay, so we have a few things here. This is the adhesive specifically for Formica. It's gonna be in the same section at every hardware store. The benefits of this is that it applies milky, but then when it dries, it's clear. A um, Couple things to know, you're gonna roll it on with this really tiny uh, roller, really short nylon hairs. Again, it's all sell, sold in the same section. They're saying that you have to roll both the front and the backside of your vinyl or laminate or Formica, whatever you wanna call it. Um, it starts getting tacky by 20, 30 minutes, but it should be dry about an hour. So I'm gonna see what we can do. I've never done this again, so we'll see if we can learn from my mistakes. So I'm gonna start pressing it on, and then I got a roller. You can use any kind of roller. This is actually like a, a linoleum floor roller, but if you can find a regular roller, you can use it as well. And then we'll rub it on and see how firmly we can press it in. You guys, I think it's looking good so far. Like it's, it's actually doing what it needs to do. I'm not crying, which is great. It's always a good day. Let's start doing the same for the top here. We have to let it dry for an hour before we start trimming this and then filing it down. I will say this is an MVP. You need a roller, a heavy duty one. Okay, so everything's dry. We're ready to start trimming anything that needs to be trimmed. Um, what they're saying is when you're filing the piece that's on top, make sure you're filing it down and not up into it, which makes sense because you can catch this and rip the glue off. Beautiful countertop. I cannot believe that I just did this. Uh, it's a lot easier than it looks, 
definitely a great place to start, especially, especially like if you got like a laundry room, right? It's not like the middle of the kitchen. But let's start cutting out a spot for the sink. It's a top mount, so we drops in. We're gonna cut a hole for it. We're gonna first make our measurements. Typically sinks are four inches from the edge here. You don't want them too deep. And the way we're gonna approach the cut is a couple of pilot holes in the corners with the drill and then follow through nicely with the jigsaw. Let's party. Folks, it's tile day. Oh, backsplash day. I uh, got all my tile here, three boxes. This is Satori, I got it at Lowe's. They're 25 bucks a box, so very inexpensive. 75 bucks for the whole thing here. We're gonna use these spacers. These are uh, 16th inch uh, spacers. They're gonna go right in the middle. I wanna see how many tile, full tile pieces can actually go into the space. And if something needs to be trimmed, we'll trim the two outer ones so it looks like it's uh, centered. When backsplashing is actually a great place to start for somebody who hasn't done too much home renovation stuff. You use the quarter inch part and you create these grates. And you have these little grooves inside that could create an air pocket. So your job is to, just like you would apply butter to a piece of toast, you back butter it. Make sure all your edges are clean. Anything that's sticking there is gonna come out into your grout line and then you have to clean it up. Then what I like to do is run my finger just to create a small little cleaning channel there as well. Again, as soon as we press this on, it's gonna squeeze out, I don't want it to do. Give it a little wiggle up and down, set our little spacer so you can figure out whichever size you need. And there we go. We're just gonna continue the pattern. Last piece of tile, bittersweet moment. I can't be more happy with this, it's perfect. I've never done a better job than this and I think I just had to fail enough times. I'm gonna go buy some shiplap and start stacking this completely vertically. I use an adhesive and uh, brad nail. So I got my brad nail right here. I'm using the flex glue. Uh, the flex glue is really great because it has instantaneous grab. So you don't have to wait for it to be falling down. I literally can put it on, push it against, and I'll stay there. Apply a liberal amount and start brad nailing in on the tongue side and then the groove side will cover it. So that way you won't see a bunch of brad nails all over the place that we have to fill. Let's party. Guys, the shiplap came out awesome. I'm definitely gonna continue wrapping this side of the wall, give it character, texture. I finished off last night all of the shiplap going to the back side here. Get to finish off this grout. I'm gonna pop all these little spacers out and then clean up with this little nylon brush, uh, specifically for tile, anywhere I still have any of that mastic or tile adhesive, and then we'll start getting it sponged down and ready for grout. All right, we're gonna let the grout dry. It's the exact same grout actually that we used on the ground here, so this way at least it'll match it a little bit. Let it dry, clean it up a few times, and then we'll start masking things off. Finally painting these cabinets. We're gonna let the backsplash cure for the next two days. In the meantime, let's start taking these doors off, mask everything off, and start shooting some primer. We're gonna shoot it. I'm using HVLP sprayer, diluted with water around 10 to 15%. So for the paint, we're gonna use the same paint we actually did the cabinets in the kitchen. It's called Baby Fawn. It's by Benjamin Moore. Put this down, besides this was left over, so didn't have to buy any paint, saving money. All right, so the next day, everything is dry. Let's put the cabin doors back on. I'm switching out the sinks. This thing looks too cheap for as nice of a laundry room that we're creating now. This is my new one. It's flat, it's more square, it's more modern. The drain is to the side. I think it's gonna look so much better. It's a top mount, so they don't usually look nice. This is the best option. Let's throw that in. The faucet situation, got a nice, beautiful champagne colored one down the middle. This has a retractable head. Barely gonna clear this, but we're working really well. Gonna attach this, drop it down, and connect the plumbing. Sinks hooked up, nothing's leaking. Uh, up next is to put the drying rack up here. Gonna put these on the sides and hang the hangers on there. All right, folks, one of the last things that's very important for us to do is to waterproof the edges 
of this countertop and the backsplash in the sink. So I've masked everything off with blue tape just to make my uh, bead a lot more cleaner and easier to clean up. I'm using FlexShot. What FlexShot is, it's a waterproofing adhesive that when you press on this little nozzle, uh, a bead comes out, you can control the flow, and then you use your finger to wipe it down. It dries uh, white, which is great. I'll match this countertop. I'll do the sink, I'll do the backsplash and the entire perimeter. That way when something gets spilled here, it doesn't go into the cabinets and on the floor. Well, it'll go on the floor this way, but not that way. I'm gonna get a quick bead and then I'll start doing touch-ups and paint and then I'll show you the big reveal. See you in a little bit. All right, folks, let's talk about the budget for this laundry room makeover. The paint supplies were $77. The plumbing and electrical was $183. The money that was spent on the backsplash was $90 total. The shiplap and the door trim was $382. The floor tile and all the supplies necessary for that was $217. The cabinet plus all the other hardware that comes with the cabinet was $373. Things to accomplish the countertops was $370. The sink alone was $289. The faucet itself was $279, making this grand total for the laundry room makeover over $2,260. Hey, thanks so much for sticking around watching yet another one of my videos. It means the world to me and a huge thank you to Flex Seal for partnering and sponsoring this video with us. We could not have done it without you guys. If you're brand new to the channel and you like videos like this or any other kind of home improvement project, make sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell. That will be alerted every time a video comes out. And connect with me on my social media. All the links will be in the description below as well as the merch section and the Patreon. The Patreon is where we have hour long excited footage that does not make it to like these 18, 19 minute clips. You'll be learning a ton from them and it helps support the channel as well. Remember guys, courage and sweat. We're not trained professionals. We're just not afraid to try and fail. Tune out this week. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya, bye. Follow the instructions on the back, but usually it's a small amount of water. Mix it for a particular, ah, can't talk. Spitting everywhere. A specific period of time because being a tall guy, a lot of my shirts need to be like hung dry, not in the dry washer, dry washer. <laughs> we don't have one of those. The first time I used it was with three quarter inch maple, or I'm sorry, pine, and it was scary.